Welcome to lesson 5C from the core book, Geometric Sequences. Uh, yesterday we looked at uh, arithmetic sequences and today we'll look at geometric. So a geometric sequence, as I just read here, uh, is a sequence which each term can be obtained from the previous one by multiplying by the same non-zero number. We call this the common ratio. So yesterday we looked at um, when we looked at the geometric, or sorry, the arithmetic, we had a common difference. And because we're doing geometric today, we've got a common ratio. So we can find if it's a geometric sequence or not by taking one term and dividing by the previous term. So for example, if this happens to be term two, then this would be term three. So we take the uh, one term that we choose, we divide by the previous term, and then that will give us some ratio R between the two terms. And a geometric sequence can also be re referred to as a geometric progression. So if we have the sequence, negative two, negative four, negative eight, et cetera, et cetera, we know it's a geometric sequence since if we were to divide, here we've got um, term one, term two, term three, et cetera, term four. Um, if we take term two, negative four, and we divide by term one, the, the term previous, we divide negative four by negative two, we get positive two. When we ter take term three, which is eight, and we divide by term two, the previous term, which is negative four, we get two, and on and on that can go. If we're told that the sequence is geometric, we only actually have to divide once to determine what that ratio is, because if we know it's already geometric, then we know there will have to be some common ratio uh, between terms. Uh, there is a geometric mean as well, just like with arithmetic sequences from yesterday, we saw that there are arithmetic or there are arithmetic means. Now there's geometric. And in this case, it's a little bit different than the arithmetic mean from yesterday. Um, if we take A, B, and C being any three consecutive terms, if we divide B by A, so one term divided by the previous one, that's going to be equal to the third term, for example, in C, uh, divided by the previous one. So these are just like, um, for example, U2 divided by U1, and then U3 divided by U2. Okay, so that's... Um, so all we're doing is we're just equating uh, the, the terms that will be divided in order to get that common ratio. Because B divided by A is actually that common ratio R. And we know that C divided by B is also that common ratio R. So that's why they have to be equal to each other. So then if we multiply both sides by B, uh, we can multiply both sides by B here then that means that B over B just equals one. So those disappear and we're left on the left side with B squared, as we can see here. And then if we multiply both sides by A as well, multiply here by A and also here by A, then over on the left side, A divided by A, that just equals one, so that's gone. And then we end up having AC as the next term. So then if we were to take the square root of both sides, then we would get the square root of b squared is b, and then we'd have to take the plus or minus, the positive or negative square roots of ac. And ac, the root of ac, is the geometric mean of a and c. Okay, so b, so that's the middle term, u2, that is equal to the root of the product of u1 and u3. So that's a dot for multiplication. Okay, so that's basically what that tell you. The first and the third term multiplied together, take the square root of that, and that will give you the, the middle term of those three consecutive terms. Um, general term, again, the general term is what we we use in order to um, connect the term number with each term. And 
we can develop a pattern with that, knowing that we have the common ratio. So if we know the first term in the sequence is u1, then the second term would be u1 times r, because we know that u2 divided by u1 is the ratio, the common ratio. Then u2, if we just rearrange this, u2, the second term has to be u1 times r. We just multiply both sides by u1. Then u3, well, the, the third term is equal to the second term multiplied by the common ratio, just for the same reason as I have diagrammed above here. But we know that u2 is u1 times r. So then u3 is u1 times r times r. So therefore, that would be u1 times r squared. And u3, well, we know that u3 is u2 times r. Um, and u2 is u1 times r. So then the fourth term is u1 times r times r times r. And that would be these r's here. r times r times r. We'll give you those three r's. And therefore, u4, u sub 4, is u sub 1 times r cubed. And on and on it goes. As you can see, the, ex the exponent of the common ratio is 1 less than the term number. And we're always multiplying by the first term. So for the geometric sequence with first term u sub i and the common ratio r, then the general term, or as we can also use the nth term, is u sub n equals u sub 1 multiplied by r to the exponent n minus 1. OK, so that will be our general term for finding geometric terms, or terms in a geometric sequence. OK, uh, here's a little example here. So um, for part A, we want to show that this term is a geometric sequence. So um, what we're going to do is we have to determine, sorry, no, that's the wrong way. Um, we take the term previous. So we're going to take negative 6 and divide by 12. And that gives us negative 1 over 2. Then we'll take 3 and divide by negative 6. That gives us negative 1 over 2. And then we'll take negative 3 over 2 and divide by 3. And that gives us, well, this is, of course, 3 over 1. And then if you were to um, divide fractions, you flip and multiply, right? So you take the you multiply by the reciprocal. And so that would be um, negative 3 halves multiplied by 1 over 3. The 3s uh, end up dividing out as 1s. And then you're left, of course, with negative 1 over 2. OK, so we see that there is a common ratio. And that common ratio is negative 1 over 2. OK, so therefore, uh, the sequence is geometric. OK, um, now we want to find u sub n and hence write the 13th term as a rational number. Well, we know that the general term u sub n is u sub 1 multiplied by r to the n minus 1. And therefore, in this case, um, u sub n is, well, u1 is 12. So we substitute 12 there. The common ratio we know is negative 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, notice that <clears throat> I can't multiply this 12 times negative 1 half because the negative 1 half is the base of an exponential. So I have to leave those separate until I substitute in a value. Okay, And then when I do that, if I want to find the 13th term, well, I'm going to substitute um, 13 in for n. That's supposed to be a 13 here. Try to clean that up a little bit. And so I've got 12 as u sub 1. The common ratio is negative 1 half. 
and n is 13. And then, of course, as we all know, 13 multiplied or subtract 1 is 12. So I'm going to have 12 multiplied by negative 1 over 2 to the exponent 12. And so then, because uh, the exponent is even, um, that base of that negative base when we apply the exponent will become positive. So this ends up being 12 over 2 to the power 12. Now to write it as a rational number, um, I guess I'm going to have to multiply 2 by itself 12 times to determine what that value actually is. I think I might use my cal trusty calculator on this one. So I will pause for a moment. So this is 12 over 4,096. And if I were to try to simplify that, I can divide top and bottom by four. So I get three over 1,024. So that means that the 13th term, u sub 13, is 3 over 124, written as a rational number. OK, and now this example, uh, we want to find k given a geometric sequence. So we know it's geometric. And we've got three consecutive terms, k, 3k, and 20 minus k. So we know there's going to be a geometric mean for these. So we know from before that that was uh, b divided by a. equals c divided by b. So we substitute those values in. So b is 3k. a, the first term, is k. Uh, the second term, or sorry, the third term, c, is 20 minus k. And the second term is 3k, once again. So I'll multiply both sides by, effectively, 3k squared. And so we end up getting 9k squared equals k multiplied by 20 minus k. And I'll expand that out. So I'll get, uh, sorry, 20k minus k squared. I'll uh, get everything over to one side of the equation. And now I'll Simplify a bit, so we'll get 10k squared minus 20k equals zero. I can factor out 10k and be left with k minus 20. Sorry, k minus 2. And this value up here is a zero. And so therefore, k equals zero or k equals 2. Now, if k were 0, um, we'd be dividing by 0 uh, in, the, uh, in b minus a. So we can't have that. Uh, so that would be undefined when we divided uh, 3k by k. Uh, so that means that k has to equal 2. And moving along to our next example, uh, we want to find the general term u sub n given the geometric sequence. So we know there's going to be some sort of common ratio r. And we've got u sub 7 is 24. So the seventh term is 24. And the 15th term is 384. So I'm going to start with that first term. So we know, first of all, that the general term is r, sorry, u1. Let's keep things consistent, u1 multiplied by r to the n minus 1. So I'm going to start with the 15th term. So the 15th term is actually 384. 
and that's equal to u1, which we don't know, multiplied by r, which we don't know, uh, and n minus 1. n is 15, and so then that is n minus 1 will give us 14 as the exponent. And for um, that seventh term, n equals 7, well, the seventh term is 24. We still don't know the first term. We don't know the common ratio. Um, and n minus 1 is 6. Okay, so now that we've done, we've got the, the two general terms written out. We know it's geometric sequence. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide. And when if, I, if I divided um, 384 by 24, I'm going to get 16. The u1s are going to cancel out because it's u1 divided by u1, which is just r, or sorry, 1. And then r to the power 14 minus, or divided by r to the power 6 is r to the power 8. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not know the eighth root of 16. So what I can do, we can do things a little bit differently here. We can change 16 to a power of 2, a base of 2 which might make things a little bit nicer for us. Then if we take the, the eighth root of both sides, well, and, and because it's an even root, we have to do a plus minus. So we're gonna do positive or negative of two to the power of four to the eighth root. And the eighth root of r to the power eight is r. So we now have our value of r effectively. And so r then is plus or minus 2 to the power 1 half. Because we multiply 4 multiplied by 1 over 8, and we get 1 over 2. So that tells us that r is plus or minus root 2. OK, so far so good. Now we need to find uh, our first term, our, our u1. So what I'll do is I'll use the simpler terms. So I'll say 24 equals u1. Well, r is root 2 to the power of 6. And root 2 is 2 to the power of 1 half to the power of 6. And um, when you multiply the powers there, the power of the power, we get 2 cubed, which is 8. And then if we divide both sides by 8, we see that u1 is 3. Therefore, our general term is u1 is 3 multiplied. Well, we still have to take into account that plus or minus um, is positive root 2 to the power n minus 1. Or it could also be u sub n is 3 times negative root 2 to the power n minus 1. OK, and that's how you would find the general term for that geometric sequence. OK, so here's a little bit of fun for you. Um, yeah, I would say go for that and uh, get a good feel for this. Uh, please make sure you ask questions if you have any, and uh, we will see you in the next class. So thank you for watching.